Hello, I am back. What's going on, everybody? It's Chris from COYB TV, and I'm back from the dead with a new format. I, as you know, if you, if I am speaking to anybody still from my old content, I used to sit in front of a camera and read you guys or talk to you guys about whatever has happened in the world of Everton Football Club, be it post-match chats, pre-match chats, breaking news, whatever. But I will not be doing that anymore. I will be speaking to my microphone that I have bought and playing most likely FIFA or whatever I feel like playing at the time and speaking to you that way you won't see my pretty face unless for whatever reason I feel like I do want to get a point across with my face but yes yeah. so let's get into today's topic Yeri Mina a World Cup star who played for Colombia who currently plays for Barcelona in the Spanish League. He's a wanted man by Everton, by Manu, and Olympique Lyon. His price at the moment seems to be forty million upwards. That is pounds. Um and two of those three teams were supposed to be backing out which was us and as well as Manchester United because they are so desperate to sign Toby Alderweireld from Tottenham and then yesterday about in US time because I am living in the US about 3 o'clock in the afternoon I opened Bleacher Report and also open Twitter. And on both platforms, I see that we have had a bid accepted for about between 28, depending on the source, 28 million to 32 million pounds. Uh, I never really understand. I mean, I guess maybe the 32 could be the 28 plus the add ons to make it 32. It was the same thing from when we signed with Charleston. But we've had a bit, a bit accepted. This is maybe 24, 48 hours after it was said that we were backing out of signing Yerry Mina. About 24 hours after Manchester United backed out of signing Yerry Mina, who he was waiting for, supposedly. He was waiting for Manchester United to figure out what they wanted to do. They were supposedly, they, they were rumored to tell him to wait so they can figure out what they want to do. But that, you know, I guess they are close to signing your, uh, Toby Alderweireld, so they put him on the back burner. Which makes sense if you want a experienced center back because it's best to have experience in your defense. And not just a back line of young kids or whatever. But he does have Premier League experience. He plays at the highest level with Tottenham. Who are a very good, solid defensive team. And knowing Jose Mourinho, he loves to play defensively. He is a coach who, besides all the park the bus jokes and whatnot which are obviously true. He thrives on hardcore defense. He thrives on pressing from the back. So it makes sense why their priority might be Toby Alderweireld. But for our side, we need a player like Yari Mina. And I am taking, I am taking this reporting with a grain of salt. Because, I mean, you don't really know until it happens. But there's also 
the fact that he is said to want Champions League experience or Champions League game time, which Manu and Olympique Lyon can offer. Now, if Manu backs off, he might turn his sights to Olympique Lyon, who are still sticking and clinging on to trying to sign him. So, who really knows? I mean, what we can offer, which isn't much, which may not appeal as much, but Premier League experience, so football at the highest level, the prospect of being part of a team who's growing, who has ambitions, who he can he can stick with us for, let's say, maybe three years. We are supposed to be moving into our stadium, which I <laughs> I am not so sure because there's not really been a lot of talk or talk of progress and movement with us moving to Bramley more. But we're supposed to be moving into our new stadium by 2021, I believe, or 2022. So there's the prospect of being of moving forward and being part of a team who grows and experiences the Champions League, experience going far in the Europa League, experience breaking into the top four, top five, six. So, there's that. There's part of a, being part of a growing team. Um, so, and then say if he does play with us for three years. Say we do this season break into the top six, top five. He can use that as a springboard. Because after this season, then maybe next season we do the same or do better. And the season after that. So, by maybe... Who knows, maybe by his third season with us, we have played in the Champions League multiple times, played in the Europa League multiple times, as well as playing at the highest level of football possible. He gets that experience. He has his resume, you know, stating that he's played in the Premier League multiple times for three seasons, you know, playing at the highest level all the time. Playing with who knows who we may sign, you know, we might sign better players and there's also the fact that he does have Lucas Dean next to him who he's supposed to be trying to convince Yeri Mina to join us so he has a friend that he's played with so it's not much to offer but that is something that I'm sure most players would consider especially being so young now in terms of the price what can you expect from a player who strived in the World Cup, who, okay, they didn't make, really get far, but they, Colombia did put in some work, and he was definitely one of the brightest spots. He scored a couple of goals. So what can you expect? I mean, I think it was said to that his price, his valuation previous to the World Cup was maybe around 16 mil. So from 16 to 40 million, that's a big jump, but what can you expect? He played well. He scored goals. He helped his team. He's a big, strong center back, which we need. He He's young. He, he was leading. He was, he was organizing his defense. So he has a lot of, a lot of things that are going for him. A lot of things that we need, and that's not only because we are desperate to clean up and and get the age, the average age of our team and our defense down. So it 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 fits us. It totally fits us, and that's probably me partially being biased, but it only makes sense. I'm only thinking logically here for us. So I would hope that some of this some of these rumors and whatnot and I'm always checking every hour I'm always checking for something new to see anything breaking with this Yuri Mina thing I haven't even seen anything about a medical I've only seen that the bid was accepted the bid was accepted and that's it nothing besides that 
I haven't seen anything about us being linked to any other players either. I've only outgoings, um, like Yannick Bellassi. I've seen that a lot. I've seen that um, Palace is trying to sign him. And Palace, along with Wolves, along with Fulham, are looking pretty good. They, just to segue a little bit, they did sign Max Meyer on free from Schalke, who is a hell of a talent. I mean, you always have to consider that his talent might not translate from the Bundesliga to the Premier League, but either either way, he has the ability to pass, to break defenses, to dribble. So he's going to be good. But Palace really do want to bring back Yannick Bellassi. They also brought back Ruben Loftus-Cheek, who we're also linked to, who I'm also a fan of, because if we want anybody similar to Ross Barkley, to carry the ball, to make things happen. Ruben Loftus-Cheek is that guy. Similar body type, strong, quick, and has the ability in his right foot. So we did miss out on him. I believe he is on loan again, though. But things are, I, I wouldn't say moving because they're not really moving, but the ambition is there. We do have until Thursday when the window closes, so I'm hoping that we do sign. Oh, also Danny Welbeck is another player that's being mentioned, again, because Arsenal and Emery, or Unai Emery, has told him that he's free to go. We do have Umar Nias, which I, I think I would take over Welbeck but Welbeck does have experience in other in higher tournaments and he does do work he is a hard working player similar to Umar Nias but his problem is injuries would I take Welbeck I guess maybe for rotation and for the experience and the abilities that he does have but I would, I would want to get rid of what um, Umar Nias for him. Okay, but back to Yerry Mina. Uh, the pricing makes sense. Like I said, now if we don't hear anything new, I'd say by today, then I guess we can consider that all this talk and all these articles and reportings are dud because if 24 hours ago it was said that we did have a bit expected or a bit accepted for him and we don't hear anything about a medical or any pictures or proof that there is movement with that then it's probably a dud I I think back to two seasons ago maybe three when we were supposed to be signing <clears throat> Yasin Brahimi from Porto. I have mentioned him <clears throat> in the past. I am a fan of his. Um, it was it was said that we had a big accepted and I was excited. And it was said that he was supposed to be our deadline day signing. He was supposed to be having a medical and all that. Nothing happened. Nothing. No movement. There was... It was similar to how the Yerry Mina situation is going. A bit accepted, but it, there was talk about him being on his way to have a medical. And then that was it. It was the same year that Musa Sissoko did the foulness that he did. Screw that guy. But, yeah. it Guys, with any rumors or any reportings for players I mean we always want to see new players we always want somebody new we always want to keep growing and keep bringing in talent because we don't really know what they're going to be like and especially if there's somebody of name and we might have seen them play a few times and then there's always the YouTube highlights to get us 
we we have to take it with a grain of salt and this is a prime example here we can't give our hopes up it, it doesn't help that we haven't been linked okay we have been linked with Jamal cells but even that hasn't really gone anywhere we've only been linked with him we haven't from what I've seen put a bid in for him so who knows where that's gonna go but he's the only other player that we've been linked to that I would actually want us to sign Ben Gibson he was exciting. I wouldn't mind him. He would be my third option. But Marcus Rojo, no. Chris Smalling, not so much. We haven't. We don't have really have any other center backs to talk about here. We haven't really been linked to anybody. I mean, I could obviously name a list of other center backs that I would throw on there, but what's the point? We... We have the money. We we can spend to help stabilize our team. Marcos Rojo wouldn't be a player I would consider to be part of that stabilization, but Chris Smalling would. Um, but it we, it's about advancement now. It's about taking down the age of the of the squad. And the wages, which we've already been doing, we've 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 lowered the wage bill. But we have to advance here. For the last two seasons, all we've heard was advancement and us growing. Last season was a huge speed bump. We were in a rut. We got out of that rut. But this season, we're playing less football. We're starting off okay. We're starting off playing wolves, who are looking frightening. So I wouldn't say it's easy, but this season we have to grow. We have to. It, it started off well signing or, or bringing on Marcel Brands, bringing on Marco Silva, still having the backing from Farhad Mashiri, bringing in players like Richarlison, bringing in players like Lucas Dean. Who has experience with Barcelona? He's that's he's he's prime because he's played for Barcelona. Even though he only played a few times, but he's been there. He's experienced. He's played in the Champions League with PSG, with Roma, with Barcelona. So he's prime. He's he's key. He think of like a writer's room, collecting ideas. So bring in more players with these with these experiences and things like that, they can collaborate and start bouncing off ideas and advice to other players. So bring on a player like Lucas Dean, who overall seems to be a great guy from even from the things that were said about him before he signed on with the whole thing with, with Barcelona, him giving water and towels and such after the riot or whatever that was. He seems like a genuine guy. So bringing a player like that is, is great. It's great for us. And when he did play uh, in that match with Valencia or against Valencia, he seemed good. Now, obviously, there's the whole thing with Kieran Tierney. From before that, I mean, we spent almost the same amount. I think it was, what, five pounds short maybe. But, you know, whatever. It's five pounds. Five million pounds is, or not five, but five million pounds is you know that's it's a lot of money to be saved but whatever i digress bring in players like that is key so bring him possibly being able to convince yerry mina to come over that would be great it would be ideal and then it would definitely be a great step forward and then there is the jamal lascelles thing which is similar to how manu is moving Bringing in a defender, who, I mean, Jamal Lascelles is younger than Toby Alderweireld. Bringing in a proven Premier League defender who has captained his team, so that he's a leader, would be also ideal, but that's why I would have him as number two. So, I, I don't know here, guys. I mean, it's only all of four days left in the transfer window. We have still 
a few gaps that we need to to sure up we need to fill up um another striker or another forward would be good a uh, striker or winger i mean not to say that the Walcott isn't good enough obviously he's i think he's fantastic he's great for us but then there is the fact that from that from that from that Valencia game Adam Lookman I mean he is coming off of an injury I believe a little injury but he didn't seem bothered there's still links with him to RB Lights big and he I, he seems to want to go so replacing him is key for me I don't know about so many of you guys, but for me, us blackballing Nikola Vlasic or, you know, whatever you want want to call that. I don't want to say it's a mistake, but I don't like it. He's had great. Let me dumb that down. He's had good performances. He's very creative. He brings that spark that that link with the midfield to the to the forward line or wherever he might be playing he brings that creativity that not not that we might need because i think that we need somebody in the midfield to create but he brings creativity to the team that obviously is key especially for the way marco silva is trying to incorporate or the way he's trying to have our team play with high press we need a lot of link up play and a lot of creativity so i don't really see why he's trying to kick him out but if we are going to get rid of him and if Adamo lookman is going to leave we need a creative forward uh, somebody who can elevate or help elevate other players around him I would say Eden Hazard, but obviously that's not happening. So someone similar, some someone like that who has free. I mean, Richarlison might be that, actually. Just just how just as seeing how involved he was in the two games he has played, he might be that. But even still, I would like to see another forward of some sort, another midfielder, central midfielder. Depending on, depending on how you view the team, it could be a defensive midfielder. It it was said that we were looking for a number six, which would be the Schneiderlin role. I I would I would agree because Morgan Schneiderlin, even though he seems a little bit more interested, he's still Morgan Schneiderlin. I think he's won back some of the respect from the fans, but like I said, he's still Morgan Schneiderlin. So, I would say that. But for years, I've wanted us to replace Mikel Arteta. Sigurdsson is our new number 10. Jersey-wise and position-wise. Which I'm happy about because he's... I've wanted him to step up. I wanted his role to step up this season. I've wanted him to be in the midfield. Not the wide midfield and not the forward I wanted him to be central like he is for his country I want him to be key and he had a great World Cup so I I imagined him being more important this season and I'm happy to see that he is so but I still I still feel that we might need something else now if Santi Cazorla was younger, I would say Santi Cazorla because he is fantastic. But that's that means nothing because he's not young. So someone, someone like that, I would have loved us to sign Lucas Torreira, who was signed for Arsenal. Someone like that would have been great. Someone like Piotr Zielinski from Napoli would be great. Uh, 
And you guys could look some of these players up if you don't know who I'm talking about. There's also Benassi from Torino, I believe. I always get Torino or Fiorentina mixed up, so either he plays for Torino or Fiorentina. Would be great. There's players out there that, given Marcel Brands is a genius and he knows what he wants and who he's looking for, but there are players out there that I think we can use. And a creative number eight would be would be great for us. I mean, I do remember maybe two nights ago watching a Toffee TV video and they were saying that we that we are we were loosely linked with Moussa Dembele of Tottenham. I mean he is like thirty or thirty one. He would be good for two seasons, but he's a fabulous player. He is more of like a number eight as opposed to a number six. I mean he is a box to box monster. Yeah, I mean, you guys. I mean, you guys know we've played Tottenham enough times. He's been in the squad, but for you, for those of you who may not know, or may not pay attention, or might not even be interested, he, he he is a monster. He bosses the midfield. He's powerful. He's quick. He can dribble his ass off. For his stature, he's not too too tall, but he's strong. So. He he would be somebody key, and also he's like a leader in the midfield. He's a general. He he like he can't pass, so he would be he would be good. He would be a good signing for us, especially if we want to have still some of that defensive ability. I mean, and we we always have Idris Aguanaga, but if we were trying to get rid of Morgan Schneiderlin, I would play Ghana probably in that holding role. Even though he does like to roam and hunter, he wants to play the hunter-gatherer role. But, I mean, I'm sure he's fine playing the holding role. But there, there's players out there, obviously, you know, that we can we can pick up for any, for any position. But we do have holes in our team still that needs to be filled. And I hope that they get filled soon. Four days isn't a lot of time. So let's just see. We just have to wait and see what happens. And let's just hope that Saturday goes well. It's it's back. The Premier League is back. We we had plenty of exciting football over the summer, but there's nothing like club football every weekend to wake up to, even certain during the week some days. So it's it's gonna be exciting. But overall our team Going forward looks great. Defending not so much. So let's just hope that we share that up. But all right, guys, it's it's been good talking. Being back, I do plan on doing more of these. I haven't figured out a schedule. So let's just see how it goes for this season and for uh for me coming back on YouTube. I will talk to you guys in the next video. Uh, you guys can follow me on Twitter. It's ChrisJ27 is my Twitter handle. I am on Instagram as well. CP underscore Jax27. J-A-C-K-S 27. And then you could just drop comments and such here. Uh, let me know if there's any breaking news. You could use those outlets. And... I am also on PlayStation. It's Cahill underscore X17X. So you guys can let me know about any breaking news, anything you want me to talk about. But thanks, guys. I will see you in the next video.